Okay, on to setting up ready to torque the front suspension. So you might be wondering why we've got this jack underneath the hub here. So what we've done, we've assembled all of the suspension here, including the lower wishbone. But when you first assemble the wishbone and the uprights, it is hanging quite low because obviously there's no weight on it. It's not holding the weight of the car as it would do normally. What you don't want to do is tighten up these bolts here, which at the moment are just finger tight, with the wishbone in that lower position. Because what happens is when you tighten this up, it pinches the inside of the elastomeric. So when you then lower the car onto it, lift the wishbone up, which has got the weight of the car on the springs, you're twisting the bush that sits within here. And then when you go over a bump, you're further twisting that bush and you can actually tear the inner bush, even if it's brand new. So what you have to do is get this to the right position it would sit at sort of standard road ride height. So for the Volvo 850, that's roughly level, horizontal, um, and slightly below actually. So in this case, we've jacked it up and I'll do a shot from the front in a second. Um, so it's in about the right position before we torque this down. Then you're not overstressing that bush too much going up or down with the movement of the wheel. When you're jacking up the hubs to set the neutral position for the lower arms, you really need to be very careful. As you put the jack underneath and you compress the springs, you're actually putting load on those springs and effectively lifting the car off the jack stands. If the car isn't properly supported, what can happen is you end up lifting it on a single side uh, and that then means the car is going to want to rock one way or the other. As you can see here, as Greg was jacking up one side, the car did start to move. Uh, we were able to catch it very quickly, put the jack back down and lower the car onto the stands. We then re-secured the car so it wouldn't move as we compressed the spring. can't stress enough safety first always check the car is properly supported when you're doing this or any time you're jacking the car up because the consequences of this could have been disastrous Have you ever heard such a pathetic noise from a jack? Oh, it's moving up. Right, well, everything is torqued up. The lower arm bolts, the hub to strut bolts here that were nice and new, and also there's a little pinch bolt down here for the lower ball joint. So, next job, new discs. So, need to put some brake clean on these, clean off any grease that's on this surface, uh, and then put it on. Shut up. So elaborate on what John couldn't get across earlier. You jack the bottom of the hub to get the wishbone level so you don't put torque in the elastomeric. You put it neutral so if it goes up and down it's got the maximum range of flexibility. Failure to do this could result in it tearing apart. You never want to tear a bush. You don't want to tear a bush. Here we see the basic mechanic in his natural environment playing with a brake caliper. While, while chuntering to himself. Ah, <laughs> damn! Oh, spiky. Is that the uh, is that the right caliper enough? Shut up. Well, the piss is back far enough though, you useless. So the last thing to do before removing the jack stands is to put a bit of air in the tires so that when we put the car on the ground, we're able to roll it around nice and easily. So we took this opportunity to adjust its position and make our lives easier in the future. This also showed that everything was moving free and that the handbrake wasn't seized, which is always a bonus. Well, little bits of progress. You might notice, the car's back on the ground. We have finished assembling all of the suspension and drive shaft and brakes, and the wheels are back on. Look at that, that properly fills the wheels. Perfect. There's still a few bits to do. So unfortunately the new bleed nipples for the calipers 
Uh, try saying that with a mouthful. Uh, weren't quite the right size, the right thread, but not a long enough thread to properly seat. So we're gonna have to take the wheels back off and replace those at some point in the near future. So an interesting little nuance we found when doing the front brakes. I wanted to put some new bleed nipples on because it's a sensible thing to do when you rebuilt the brakes. And there was two types listed in some sites for the T5. This one here with a slightly bigger thread, this one here with a smaller thread. I'll put the details in the description. Uh, so I ordered both, so I thought, oh, I've got both options, shouldn't be a problem. Turns out, neither are correct. This one is what it should have. It should be that thread and that length, not that thread and that length or that thread and that length. So uh, make sure when you're buying uh, new bleed nipples, the brakes, you find the correct one. This one goes in and fits, but it, um, it touches the top here against the caliper before it's, uh, it's closed the valve at the bottom. So you've got none of the thread sticking out, which means it will just leak out from the top of here rather than actually sealing on the valve here. Whereas that one, you get one or two turns of the thread sticking proud, which means it's touched at the bottom first. Uh, we now have some work to do under the bonnet to finish off with the actual manual conversion, but she's getting a step closer. The next big job is gonna to be to fix these crusty little so-and-sos. But they're a bolt-on, bolt-off part. So that should be dead easy. So one of the little jobs we mustn't forget to do is to kind of tell the car it's not an automatic anymore. So first things first is to remove the automatic gearbox ECU. So you can see from this, we actually were doing some fault finding before it went off the road to see whether it was an ECU fault with the gearbox. Uh, so we swapped one from another known good T5. Uh, turned out it was actually the gearbox that was knackered. So we need to take the loom that goes to the gearbox and we need to basically fool the car that it's in park or neutral because an automatic won't start if it's in drive or in gear. Um, so we need a few little bits and pieces. First of all, some connectors. So we're gonna splice into the loom where it goes into the gearbox, strip the cables back, uh, connect the two ends of the cable up so it thinks it's in park, uh, crimp it down so we've got some crimping tools, a bit of sheath to keep the moisture out and a bit of electrical tape just for good measure to tidy it all up. So you're gonna have to bear with this because it's gonna be dark now, it's that time of year, but let's see if we can do it. So this is the loom for the gearbox. You can see we've cut into it. Inside here, there are four green wires. One thick green, which is this one here. One green with a red stripe, which is that one there. Those are the two you need to short to let the ECU know that the gearbox is in park. So the ones you don't need, this one here, which is a solid green, a thin one. And just tucked in there is the green with the white stripe. So you can leave those two alone. The rest of this is actually surplus to requirements. So We'll probably just tidy it up and tuck it away somewhere out of the way rather than starting to cut too many wires. So that's green and green with a red stripe shorted, uh, crimped in there with a bit of heat shrink over it in the same colour. And now it's going to wrap uh, a little bit of electrical tape round to seal it from the elements. All wrapped up in electrical tape and sealed from the elements. Do ignore this little one here. This was the wrong green wire we cut initially when we first started. I'll tidy it up in a bit. So what this now does is this tells the, um, the car that it's in park or it's in neutral which the automatic gearbox needs to start. So the car will now, in theory, start. Okay, so the next piece in the puzzle is wiring up the reverse light. So the little two pins you can see sticking out the top of the gearbox there, just underneath the linkages, is the reverse light switch. So basically, when you slot it into reverse, it shorts those two terminals together, puts your light on. Now, within the automatic gearbox wiring loom, which is this monster down here, um, there is two wires which do basically the same thing to the auto box. Um, they are pins five and pins nine in this connector, uh, which is a solid blue and a blue with a gray line. Now, assuming it's the same on all of them, they're the two thicker of the blue wires. There are four, maybe five blue wires. Uh, there's one that's solid blue, but quite thin. One solid blue with a black stripe. And I think that's actually green with a blue stripe. But the two thicker wires, which are these ones here, is blue and you can just about make out the gray stripe on that blue one so basically we need to take those out of this connector um, and we need to plumb them up to that switch on the gearbox back there uh, a useful little tip uh, to open up this connector now i intend to keep the connector and tuck it out of the way you can cut this clean off and just use the wires you need and get rid of the rest um, but if you want to open the connector up if you turn the connector upside down you'll just be able to see the edge of this little blue clip here you push that in with a flathead screwdriver and then there's two clips around where the wires go in at the back of the connector here you can ping those off in fact 
Uh, one there, one there. Again, a little flat blade screwdriver in there. And then the whole top of this connector will come away. And that will allow you to look at all the pin numbering. And if you look very, very closely, you'll just be able to see the pin numbering on there. It's up, down, upside down in this picture. Um, but you can trace then, so it kind of counts from the top. Uh, it numbers one, two, three, four, five, six as it goes along. Um, so you can work out which one's which. So yeah, pins five and nine. So we need to get those out of this loom and then we need to extend them over and find a way of connecting them to that connector. Unfortunately, we didn't take the connector off the manual car that goes on there. So we may have to fabricate something. So one further check to do before wiring everything up is to check the reverse switch is actually working. So what should happen when you put the car into reverse, it should essentially short these terminals so you get a closed circuit. So I've put the two crocodile clips on there and I've set them up to, sorry, it's very dark this time of year. Set them up to my multimeter and the car is set in reverse. And unfortunately we have an open circuit. So it looks like the switch is dead as well. So there's a bit more fettling to do yet. Thank you for watching Talking Talk. Tune in next time for episode eight, belts and braces. That's all for this instalment of Project T5 Rescue. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can now follow us on all the usual social media things and on automotivetales.com. No, seriously, if uh, we can make some money from this, I might actually get more passes out from the wife to go and video messing around with the Automotive Tales fleet. So no, this is important. Like, share and subscribe. Now, do it.